Ryan Jarrell here for Fight Bananas, and my next guest will be facing Sawyer Depee for the vacant cruiserweight title on October the 25th for BKFC. And of course, I am talking about Chris Camozzi. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, man. Excited to be back. Yeah, always great talking to you. You're always such a good interview. You give some great insight on the matchup. What, what were your first thoughts when you heard of, of Sawyer and, and this, this title fight? Uh, I was excited about it. You know, I've been sidelined for a while. I've been, because my last fight was with Lorenzo last September. So, I mean, it's been over a year. My whole goal has always been to fight three or four times a year. So, with that long year layoff, I was like, man, what am I doing? Like, should I just be done? Um, you know, I'm 37. I'm going to be 38 next month. I started thinking, like, is this it? You know, am I done? What should I do? You know, because I've got a job outside of fighting and you know, I'm good there. So it was, it was refreshing for them to finally hit me up. It's great that it's for the title. Um, I think Sawyer definitely deserves that title shot. You know, he's been on a, a good run, a lot of finishes. Um, so I kind of had him near the top of the list as far as opponents they'd offer me. I would say it was him. Um, I figured him like Houston, Alexander, Jeremy Smith, even though he just lost. Um, so yeah, I, it was kind of expected, but yeah, I love it. And with that one year layoff with you being, you know, eager to want to fight, forgive my ignorance, but like with, with your contract with BKFC, would you be able to, to fight somewhere else or are you locked in? Like you, you can't fight unless they find you one. No. So everything I've done with BKFC, even my last title fight was all one a single bout agreement. Um, surprisingly, cause it was for the title that last one, it was still a, a single fight contract. They've never, I've never pushed for it and they've never offered me a multi-fight contract, which was nice. And that was the reason for it was that year layoff. I was like, well, I could go out and find another fight if I wanted. I got some offers, just nothing that um, excited me or that I figured was worth the, the money to do it. So I didn't go out and find other stuff either, but at least I could leave it open to other options. And you had to have known with how close that fight with Lorenzo was that in the, and obviously with him being suspended that you'd be in there fighting for the title next right like did they did they tell you like hey just hang tight we're, we're gonna get you this marquee fight this title fight that you want and you deserve no no they didn't tell me anything i was like in the dark you know they kept telling me we have something for you and then months would go by and nothing and i'd be like hey you know what's the deal what's the deal i'd i was probably bothering the hell out of feldman i would text him like Text him or call him probably weekly. I bet he got sick of it too. But I was like, man, the closed mouth doesn't get fed, you know? And plus I'm, I'm willing and able to fight. I'm not getting any younger. So I was like, let's do this. You know, it didn't even have to be for the title. I just told him like, give me somebody. Let me just get back in there. You know, I'm, I've got a, a clock on this. I know we talked a little bit about this before, but you know, as time passes, you know, people, they change their mind on things. Like how much longer do you think that, that you have in this combat sports world? Like, do you, do you, is it a fight limit or is it years? No, it's neither. Honestly, it's more just uh life, I guess. So I'm putting everything into this fight. I, I just recently kind of put it out there that this fight's all or nothing for me. So it's win or retire. Um, Obviously, I want to keep going. So that's like the motivation because a lot of people are like, oh, do you have he's got one foot out the door then? Like, I can't imagine not fighting. And it's terrifying to me because I love it. It's my favorite thing to do. So I uh, but at the same time, I make really good money outside of fighting and the amount of dedication and time that it takes to get ready for a fight. And, you know, with the potential of things falling through, I'm getting older. Um, I like stability. But it's also, I need some kind of adrenaline rush. So the idea of not fighting scares the hell out of me. So that's why I want to put that on this, though. Because I, I thrive under pressure like that. You know, it's not going to make me buckle being like, okay, well, if I don't win, and I'm done. That That's more motivation than I've ever needed. Do you notice, like, is it harder to recover nowadays, like in camp, when you're really getting after it? Do you, do you find that it takes your body a little bit longer to, to bounce back? Um, no, my body, I feel like is pretty used to it. I would say, you know, I, I've got not injuries, but you know, I, I got some regular joint pain and stuff from years and years. I'm going on 20 years. I just realized, um, the other day. 
so there's there's mornings I wake up, you know, I walk sideways down the stairs because my knees hurt and stuff. But um the nice thing is that that was a big reason for switching to BKFC is that it's easier on my body. You know, wrestling and stuff is what really kills your body. Um, so being able to train for just boxing for for BKFC has actually like been great for my body. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. When when I used to train, I, I you know wrestling, jujitsu. I, I mean, my goodness, the the way that you'd feel the next day or the next two days, it, it was miserable. I'm a hundred percent with you. I'd much rather go and smash pads and and you know box than than everything else that comes with mixed martial arts. It's got to, it's really probably got to rejuvenate you at this stage of your career. Absolutely. Yeah. You hit it right. Um, because yeah, you know, kicking, checking kicks, you know, knees, all of that stuff, it, it wears a toll. It's just hard impact on your body. So I can still do it. I still do jujitsu. Um, obviously not during training camp, but I still go in and roll and I'll do that forever, but doing it at a competitive level, if I wanted to, I could still do a couple more MMA fights, but they would need to be spread out because, yeah, my body has, has definitely taken a toll, but I've taken care of myself too. What is your weight at these days? Like walking around, if you're outside of camp, like how, how big are you getting now? Uh, about 225. Okay. So I, I don't cut real hard. I mean, to some people that might be a lot because this is at 205. Like I just left sparring, my last sparring session, and I was 220 which I ate a lot this morning. I ate a lot yesterday just to, I was planning ahead for sparring, but what I do now from here on out, like this weekend, I'll cut my meals down. I've just been eating. I always eat healthy, like year round. I eat, you know, being living with Whitney and being in a relationship with my girlfriend, she's a health nut. So we don't have any crap in the house. Every meal we eat is very like balanced and healthy. So I do that year round and Starting now, I'll just start cutting down the portion size because right now I've just been eating until I'm stuffed, but need that energy. Yeah. And, and you used to fight all the way down at, at 185 when you were in the UFC. So like when you would get down that low, I, I think the question that, you know, a lot of people want to know is, did, did you get the flat butt syndrome that uh, you had in your video uh, recently? Or is that something that you'd stay away from? <laughs> no, definitely. It, uh, Cutting down to 185 was brutal because so I've always walked around 220, 225. So cutting to 185 was brutal for me. But at the time I was young, so that helped. Um, you know, in my early 20s and stuff. And then the guys that were fighting 205 in the UFC at the time were cutting from 250, 260. So it just everybody did it. So you you just always cut. And now I'm just like, I don't want to cut weight. I think that that's prolonged my career too. Now I just enjoy it. I don't have training sessions where I'm miserable and just like depleted because I'm focusing on cutting weight, but also getting ready for the fight. Those, that's a really hard balance to deal sure. with. So for me, it's awesome. Cause I can, you know, train at my walk around weight every day. I cut down meals a little bit and then my, my weight will drop to two Oh five. I probably won't even have to get in the sauna or anything. And then it'll bounce back up the next day. Yeah, well, that's you got down to a science, man. And obviously, you know, I I mentioned the flat butt syndrome. I thought that video was hysterical, dude. Like that was <laughs> that was really funny. Did, who came up with that idea? Was that you or Whitney? Uh, no, it was actually um, her name's Holly Trinidad. So she is one of the owners of the brokerage that I worked for. Um, I said worked. I work there still. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she she's had this like addiction to social media lately because nobody's doing it in commercial real estate. So she comes up with funny videos, which you might not think sell real estate, but they draw attention to like our, our company. You know, as long as they're entertaining, it gets you exposure. And yeah, it was her idea. And then she wanted to incorporate Whitney because Whitney is big on like glute training. A any videos uh, in the pipeline that you guys might release again soon? I don't know. I can never keep track. I mean, she's always filming everything, so <laughs> we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm sure there'll be plenty more. So if you guys want to tune in on those, it's at Hoff Lee, H-O-F-F-L-E-I-G-H. But yeah, they've been fun. Yeah, I thought that was hysterical, man. So I wanted to get to kind of play around, and have a little fun with that. Um, you, you know, your girlfriend too, Whitney, she was doing some uh, boxing as well. What What's the next steps for her as far as that goes? Uh, I don't know if she'll do more or not. You know, for her, it was kind of a bucket list thing. She's always hit mitts and um, and trained, but she had never fought. She'd never sparred. 
when she accepted to be in that uh, women's tournament, she had never even sparred. So it was pretty crazy. I was, I was very against it at first. A lot of her fans thought that I like convinced her to start fighting. And I was like, no, no, no. I tried talking her out of it. Um, but she did it and I was super proud of her. And it's, it's still blows my mind. Like her first fight was at Wembley and it was sold out. And her second fight was at the three arena in Dublin and it was sold out. My first fights were in like strip clubs and, and barns and stuff like that, you know, with like nobody there. Um, but she did great. And unfortunately for her, the tournament didn't finish. Um, they ran out of funding and she got to experience a little bit of the dark side of fight sports because they didn't pay her on the second fight. Even though we went all the way to Ireland, um, they never paid her. They're in the process. Luckily, I was able to get a hold of the promoter and work something out, but making payments to her, but their funding completely dropped. And at first they disappeared, which was a very scumbag move. You know, when you put your whole reputation and everything on the line, you go out there, give it everything you got and you fight to have the promoter disappear or bounce checks is that is like kind of the ultimate disrespect i think for us as fighters oh yeah yeah that's that's not good that that happened uh with a regional promotion up where i'm from in new england and it did not go over well my my old coach who actually you probably know him he was in the ufc marcus davis yeah remember him yeah the irish hand grenade that's right that's right he fought on that card and if you know marcus like he's not he's not afraid to speak his mind and he went like on a tirade on on social media about it i i'm not sure ultimately what happened i think he got compensated but yeah that was you don't do that to fighters i, I still can't believe that there would be a promotion or anyone out there ballsy enough to do something like that especially in the fight game like you got to pay these guys yeah the promotion was called kingpin and the the promoter's name was chris boyne he's an irish guy so anybody out there ever sees him don't ever do business with that guy. But uh, one of his investors has rounded back and trying to make it right, which I will give him a ton of credit um, for doing that because he could have just disappeared as well. So luckily we were able to work something out with him and then it's uh, they're paying her monthly to get back to it. But the other guy we'd never heard from, Chris, Chris Boyne just completely disappeared. Like he, uh, he screwed over like Kiefer Crosby, who's in the UFC now. Kiefer was on that card. Um, out of Connor's gym, there was a lot of people, a lot of like big influencers yeah. and stuff too that he just ghosted. Not good, man. Yeah, well, it's good that you were able to work something out now, and and you're getting some installments to to get paid. I do see that you guys also had a, a trip planned to Greece, right? Tell me a little bit about that and what you're doing with that. Yeah, so we're doing uh, travel retreats based on kind of like health and wellness. So <laughs> it's a great way to. I guess the first question people ask is like, oh, are you just working out the whole time? Like, don't want to go all the way to Greece and just work out. We'll do one workout a day, whether it's like some boxing stuff, um, some of Whitney's workouts. But then the rest is like excursions and, and traveling and having fun and getting to experience Greece, stay in a five-star resort. Um, so it'll be really cool. It, it's more fun than it is working out, but it, it will be a lot of tailored stuff for people to learn. And also just travel with like-minded people that are interested in like, you know, health, wellness, being fit. Um, and you don't even have to be fit to go. It's just, you know, it's a good starting point and it's in a perfectly like beautiful location. So do you have people locked in now or are there still spots available? I think we have two spots left. Um, and the deadline is November 1st to, uh, to book your spot. So it's just a deposit that you need to hold your spot and then the trip will be in May. So you have more time to actually pay for the rest of the trip, but everything is included other than your flight. We have all the excursions, everything that we, we put together as part of the package. So it's actually a great deal. It, it might seem expensive up front, but then when you see everything that's included, like your room, all of that, um, it actually works out to cheaper than probably if you would do it yourself. How much are we talking total? <clears throat> Uh, God, there's a few different packages based on if you want your own room. Um, cause some people want to like go and meet people, you know? So if we have two women coming that, you know, are open to sharing a room with somebody, we might put them together and then, you know, maybe that's your new lifelong friend, but, um, I'll send you the website. There's a few different packages that you can book, but yeah, it's definitely, it's an affordable thing if you plan ahead. Okay. 
So I was thinking maybe me and my wife would want to do something like that. That sounds fun. Dude, I would love it if you came. Yeah. That yeah. would be, that, that'd be a blast. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I would love to to do an MMA workout with you and, and have you put me through like a, a pad session where you just absolutely smoke me and, and I'm, you know, drenched by the end of it. That that's what I love. I, there's nothing I like more than hitting pads. Yeah, definitely. So I'm bringing mitts, tie pads, all that stuff. Um, cause anybody that wants to do it, you know, I'll, I'll hold mitts for you. We can do privates and stuff. None of it's charged. It's just being out there, having fun and, and enjoying it. Okay. Yeah. Send me this stuff when, when we get done with the interview. Uh, Definitely. Had to ask you about that. Uh, obviously too, like you're still doing the podcast. How's that going? Uh, I'm not at the moment. So I left the company that I was working for back then. Um, and they had a whole studio, an editor, producer, all the equipment. Um, I would like to bring it back at some point. It's just finding the time, you know, I think within the next year or so, I'll just get my own equipment the, the hardest part for me is I am not a tech person at all. So when it comes to editing or like producing it, I'm going to need some help. So finding the right person for that is really the biggest tool to it. Okay. Well, you're very good at, you know, on camera, your knowledge base, obviously. So I think you need to find a way to, to get back into the podcast world and, and, and get your, your voice out there, my man. Um, I, I, we got to talk about the Lorenzo fight. Obviously you alluded to it earlier in the interview over a year ago now, very close split decision. Let me just start there. Did you agree with the decision or do you feel like you should have got your hand raised? Um, you know, I, I thought I won, but at the same time, I also like full transparency. I've, I've always said, you know, you got to beat the champion to be the champion. Um, should I have done more? Probably, you know, did I think I did enough to win? Yeah, but I shouldn't have left it that close and should have pushed it. So it is what it is. You know, I don't fault any of the judges or anything for that. Um, that's just being honest with myself. You know, I, I look back and I'm like, man, I should have pushed it harder round five during round five. I thought it was round four actually. And it's not my coach's fault either. I kept asking in between rounds, what round is it? Cause I wanted to keep track and make sure, you know, if I had to pull the trigger and, and really go for it, go for broke that I did. And uh, when round five happened, everybody got in the ring and I asked my coach, I'm like, well, what are we doing? He's like, fight's over. So I regret that. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I was hoping that we would rematch and now I don't know if that will happen. Yeah. Anything that he did or didn't do that surprised you in the fight? Uh, no, not really. Um, he was a little quicker than I planned on, you know, I'm, I'm not the quickest fighter. I, everybody knows that. So he, he had some speed on me. Um, and he was very good at getting in and out. He, he's very, um, explosive, which I knew going in, but you know, it was a little bit faster than I thought. But at the same time, listen, I would drop everything to do it again. So we'll yeah. see. And obviously suspended now for 18 months for banned substance. Do you know or do you think that he was on that banned substance leading up to your fight? Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't want to speculate, but if you wanted me to guess, most I would guess probably he's been on stuff for a long time um, and they just didn't. You know, you go to California, California doesn't play around when it comes to testing and stuff. I think a lot of people didn't realize that. And, you know, if you go to New York, New Jersey, California, there's some states that are very, very strict on testing, no matter what the promotion. Um, and that was BKFC's first event in, in California. So I have a feeling a few of the guys didn't expect that. But who knows? You know, at the end of the day, I don't really care. Even if he was on stuff when he fought me. Well, I think it was Matt Brown that said it best a long time ago, like steroids don't build up your chin. So it was still my job to hit it and put him down. And I didn't. Mm. It's got to be difficult too, though. I mean, you know, obviously you, you want to become the champion and you're going in there against the guy that is one of the faces of the sport. And it was such a razor thin, close fight. In my opinion, obviously the judges thought so too. And then, you know, after the fight here, he he pops and his suspended that that has to leave you kind of with a bad taste in your mouth. I'd imagine. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. He can choose what he chooses to do. You know, I think that I've fought probably plenty of guys around steroids over my career. Um, statistically, I would say that's probably a for sure thing, but you know, fighting, if I go out and get in a street fight with a bodybuilder, it shouldn't matter that he's on steroids. I should be the better fighter. Um, so yeah, I guess I don't weigh too much thought into it. 
Okay. Uh, fair, fair enough. And w- what you just said uh, a minute ago too, you're not so sure if that eventual rematch will ever happen. If you had to place like uh, some odds on that happening, do you, what do you think the chances are? Is it 50, 50 or ultimately, I mean, you're going to be in shape ready a year or two from now anyways. Like, do you think the chances are still fairly decent that you might get that rematch? Um, I don't know, you know, cause like I said, I don't know how long I'm going to be, I'm going to be fighting still, you know, let's call it two years, two years from now, I will be almost 40. Um, and I don't know where I'll be at in life then, you know, I could have kids or something, um, to where I need my attention somewhere else. I wish, I wish he didn't get suspended. You know, I know a lot of people probably assumed that I was happy about that. I was actually pissed. I came home throwing everything. I was like, now I'm never going to get that rematch. Um, but who knows? I mean, I know Lorenzo's in his forties too. So one thought I had is if he, if he still wants it, then maybe we just go out of the country and do it. You know, what is, what's the commission going to do? Honestly, they can't find him if he's not fighting anymore. Um, I don't know. I think there's some options there that I'm open to. I know the fans would love to see a rematch. Uh, I would love to see a rematch too, for what it's worth. Um, let's talk a little yeah, bit about me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. Let's talk a little bit about BKFC 67. It's right around the corner, October the 25th. You're fighting in Denver, Colorado at the Denver Coliseum. How excited are you to be fighting back in, in Denver? And, and what's the support going to be like come fight night? Do, do you have a lot of people that, you know, intend to be there in person? Oh, yeah. You know, the the support is amazing. Anytime I get to fight in Denver, it's amazing. Um, we've sold out the arena. Every fight I've had so far for BKFC – and I mean, back when I was fighting on local shows and stuff, you know, I would sell 300 or more tickets just by hand. Um, so I've always had a great following here for this fight. I've already sold every table um, that they had. I think a few guys sold a couple other ones, but I sold like maybe 15 tables around the ring um, and then all the other tickets. So huge support system. I've got Chuck Liddell coming out to corner me, which is great. He was one of the coaches on Ultimate Fighter and I used to go train at the pit. Um, so that's really cool, you know, kind of rounding back over time of my career. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't tell you how excited I am and to have it for the belt. Yeah. I love the fact that you're going to have the ice man in your corner. I'll tell you a funny story real quick. So I used to live out in California right after college, I, I moved there and I was in the home Depot parking lot, like in the Valley with a, a buddy of mine, we were just chatting outside of our vehicles in this like all black windows tinted Range Rover pulls up and parks right next to us guy gets out of the car and comes around the the other side and it's Chuck Liddell and he looks right at me and he has that look like in his eyes like he's gonna like tear my head off and I mean I was just a huge fan and and he made me so scared like I I wanted to say hi but he looked like he was in a bad mood so I didn't and then I told him about that afterwards when I got the chance to interview him maybe like a year ago and he started laughing he he couldn't be any nicer of a guy What, what is that like to have a relationship with someone that's such an icon Oh, it's amazing, man. So I, I grew up watching him just like everybody else did, you know, before I ever started training or anything, I would get every pay-per-view that had Chuck Liddell in it. Um, and then fast forward to the ultimate fighter when Chuck and Tito were the coaches, you know, cause Tito was the same way. I'm a huge fan of him all the way through. Um, so to me, it was like having the two guys that I looked up to the most that were icons as the coaches that season was awesome. And then staying in touch with them after it was like, man, what is going on like with my life now? Like I, the guys that I was watching on TV and buying these pay-per-views and stuff. Now I know on like a personal level, um, but it's just cool. Cause like when you meet them at the end of the day, like these kind of guys are regular people. They just um, get put on a pedestal by people, but great guys. And just having an icon like him in there. And he sponsored me with his clothing line, King of Violence. Um, just really, really cool. I think, especially as I'm getting, closer to the end of my career. These are just memories to like, you know, keep forever. Were you ever starstruck or has there been ever anyone in the past, maybe when you were younger that like you were really starstruck being around? Was it Chuck and Tito? No, I've actually, I've never really been a starstruck person. I'm actually pretty bad about recognizing people. Um, fighters and stuff I do cause I watch it religiously, but I could see somebody from a movie that I've seen out and not even realize like who it is or remember their name or, um, I've had some people, some very famous people look at me funny. Cause I'm like, yeah, what's your name? Like, you look really familiar, you know? Um, 
but then I've, I've done executive protection work for a really long time. So I've worked for some of the biggest celebrities in the world um, on a personal level. So part of that job is also not being like a fanboy and starstruck, yeah. you know, they're, they're paying the check. That's all you care about. Right. Can you give me a name or two who you did security for? Oh man, I've worked with, uh, let's see, I've worked for Jay-Z and Beyonce. I've worked for Usher, um, worked for Stevie Wonder, um, J-Lo. There's a lot of them. Uh, and you know, it's, you can't be starstruck and do that job. Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt, man. That's, that's pretty cool. I worked at the Jimmy Kimmel show for a while, so I got to meet a lot of people working there. Oh, so, yeah. uh, yeah, I've been, I've been around uh, qu quite a few big time celebs. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the co-main event, Brandon Gertz, Cameron Van Camp. Uh, how's Gertz looking leading up to this fight? Man, Gertz is Gertz. He, uh, I call him the mountain man. He's just like a caveman. That guy, he, he cracks me up. Cause like I go spar. I don't think he spars. Gertz fights. He, uh, he, everybody knows in the gym, if you're big or small or whatever, if you're going around with Gertz, like he's trying to take your head off and that's just how he is. Um, so, you know, I, I always feel good for him going into fights because he's just a fighter through and through. Like that guy just wants to tear your head off. And, uh, I think this is going to be a great fight for him. He, he's fighting, uh, Van Camp, I think is pretty tall. He's like six, two. And a lot of people think that, having uh a lot of height is an advantage which it can be sometimes but with bkfc you get these like rushing attacks you know and that's to me it's harder to fight short people than it is tall people like lorenzo when i fought him i'm so much taller than him it was actually a uh like a negative for me because i had to stay low if he got underneath me then it's a problem and i think gertz you know he's he's not the tallest guy at all so once he's in, he's in and he's in your face, which is uh, really tough if you're going to try to pull back because he's going to pop that head off. He's got a lot of power. There's no doubt about that. Who have been like the, the main guys to get you ready for Sawyer? Anyone in particular that you've been getting working with more than, than others? Uh, not really. We've got um, this guy, Xavier, from the gym. He fights for LFA. Um, he just finished up his college wrestling career. Um, but he grew up boxing, so he's got really good hands too. Um, Grant Neal. Um, we got a guy, Hammer, who's a local heavyweight, but he's fought on some regional shows. Um, just quite a few people. It's always different at Genesis because we do cross training and stuff all the time. Like we, you never know who's going to be in there that day. Like Neil Magny and Drew Dober come in. Um, let's see. Like Brian Ortega was just at the gym today, randomly walked in. And I was like, oh. I don't even know what he's doing here, but he's here. Like there's always different people um, from in and out of town. So it's great because I don't know who I'm going to be going with that day. Yeah, that's cool, man. You guys have a lot of studs at, at Genesis, no doubt about that. So it just makes it easier for you to get different looks, to get ready for big fights like this. Sawyer uh, is five and two, if I'm not mistaken. All five of his wins are in the first round. Is, is Obviously that has to be like the most dangerous part of the fight for you is just making sure you kind of – look out for him rushing in the first round, trying to finish it early. Do you feel like, you know, if you're able to, to, you know, make, drag this into a longer fight, you're just going to be able to kind of piece him up and tire him out. Like, like what, what are your thoughts when you look at the matchup? Um, yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of first round finishes. I don't know much about the guys he's fought. I know that the level of competition, obviously I've been doing this so long, the amount of guys I've fought that, um, were dangerous in the first round is pretty much everybody. So I don't weigh too much on it. Um, looking back on my career, it's pretty crazy knowing that I've never been finished with strikes um, ever in 50-something fights. I've never been dropped. Um, I don't know. I don't think too much on it. I'm sure he's got good power. I can see when he hits people, you know, they start wincing a lot more. And I think he, he seems to break a lot of bones. But at the same time, I'm, I don't know. I've got this like Rottweiler head on me <laughs> and uh, it's fine. I like those kind of fights too. I mean, my goal is to put him out in the first round too. I'm not getting paid by the minute. I want to get out of there as quick as possible. Did you learn anything specific uh, from his two losses? I mean, he was finished in both of his losses as well. Like I'm sure you've watched plenty of tape on him. Anything that kind of stood out? Um, Not too much. I think just touching him, you know, I think I'm going to hit quite a bit different than a lot of the guys he's fought. And uh, it might be a little shocking for him too. You know, I, I hit different angles. I don't put power on every single punch. Um, 
but just touching him, you know, I've noticed that jabs bother him quite a bit. Um, but who knows, you know, like a lot of his losses, the last ones were a ways back, you know? So I, I assume he's training every day, getting better and better. So I hope the best him comes, honestly. Do you think that he's as dangerous uh, of a fighter as, as Lorenzo is or was, or is this going to be an easier fight for you? Uh, I mean, I don't think it'll be easier. I don't think any fight's easy, especially bare knuckle, because it, it only takes one. He's shown that he's got that knockout power, um, and it doesn't even look like much. You know, he doesn't load up a ton on him. Uh, he seems like he just has really heavy hands. I know he's got a wrestling background, so those guys usually do just have that thudding power for some reason. <laughs> for some reason over the years, it's been every wrestler seems to have that just like heavy, heavy, like thick power. It's not as like snappy as boxers, but it's just like thudding power. So I don't know. I mean, I don't put much into it. My goal is to go in there, have a brawl and beat his ass. Do you have an official prediction for me? I'm going for that first round finish. Like I said, it's not, I'm not paid by the minute. That last fight was five rounds. Five twos isn't too bad. Two minute rounds go by really quick, but at the same time, my other two knockouts in BKFC were quick and that's great. You know, let's get in, get out, get that check and move on to the next one. Injury free. I've never been to a BKFC event in person. What is the the vibe like? What, what are the, what's the energy like and in, in, in the fans there? Uh, is it different than UFC? Yeah, it is quite a bit different. Um, the energy is high the entire time. They, they do put on a good show. I will say that like the first one I went to, I was like, wow, you know, like they put on a really cool show. The one thing about them, that's pretty crazy. It's great for the fans. Um, for the fighters, it's a little tough is, and luckily somebody told me this before my first one, they move very quick. So the UFC, if you ever pay attention, the UFC runs one fight every half an hour, whether it goes to a decision or it ends in five seconds, they fill it with commercials. There's, mm -hmm you know, all this promo stuff going on in the arena, BKFC, if there's a finish, boom, they're walking the next fight right after the interview. They stage one fight ahead. They don't do a lot of like fluff in between fights. So when I fought Lorenzo, I think we were out of there by nine or nine 30 and they went through 12 fights and the fight started at seven. Wow. So they are quick. That's like a, that's like almost like a regional show. Like when I'm doing the commentary for like one of these local promotions, you know, if that they just go from one, one fight to the next. And sometimes you're out of there, you know, two hours, two and a half hours later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've started warming up like almost pretty much at the start of the undercard. I'll start just moving around, getting my stuff on because you don't know how fast it's going to go. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Can't wait to to watch this one. Uh, you got to stick around, Chris. Win or lose, I'm sure you're going to win, but you got to stick around for, for a, a couple more fights. You got a lot of people that enjoy watching you compete. Oh, I appreciate that. Win, I'll definitely be around because I'm going to be champion. I'm going to have to defend that thing. You know, what? what is the, I guess, the plan for, for next year uh, once you do get this belt? Um, how, how often would you like to defend it? Is it something where maybe twice a year makes sense or would you like to maybe do it more often than that? I'd have to play it by year, depending on how the fights go, you know, like injury wise. But if I'm healthy, then I would like to defend as many times as possible. Like I said, I'm not, time is against me, you know, I'm only getting older. So why not get them all in? Um, yeah. If I'm healthy and life is good, training camp is good, then let's keep going. Awesome, man. Well, Chris, always a pleasure talking to you. Best of skill. Come fight night again. October the 25th is when it all goes down. Before we do sign off here today, I want to kick it over to you, give you the floor. Anything you want to plug, any sponsors you may have, floor is yours. Yeah. So King of Violence, like I said, Chuck Liddell's company, they got their, I love their t-shirts, man. Check them out. Uh, Knight Rider Jewelry. I started working with them back in like 2010. Um, me, Shane Carwin, Brandon Schaub. Um, rounded back to now and I just did another deal with them. They opened a store here in Colorado. So that's really cool. Um, I got some local companies, uh, a painter, a perfect finish. So they do commercial and residential painting, which I sell commercial real estate now. So it's kind of a good tie in. Um, Half Face Blades is always behind me. Um, that's an amazing company. They've got the coolest knives around. I'm sure you hear Joe Rogan talk about them all the time. Um, Hoff and Lee, the brokerage I work for. So it's Hoff and Lee Commercial Real Estate. And yeah, if you're listening to this and you have a business in, in Colorado, 
I help people find leases, negotiate them, buy and sell real estate. Um, commercial only. Don't call me for your houses. <laughs> RMA, body armor. So you're going to see me wearing a, a, a plate carrier and everything for weigh-ins actually. It was part of the deal, but they make some of the best body armor in the world. And I do a lot with law enforcement and everything. So um, I'm happy to be working with them.